At this point in 2007, Barack Obama was stuck about 25%. Hillary Clinton was way up there. He couldn't start winning until he started winning. And when he did well in Iowa, it drew the nation's attention to him and energized people. The normal contest, at this point four years ago, who led the Republican contest? New York Giuliani. Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. In second place was Tennessee Senator Fred Thompson. In third place at 14 points was John McCain. In fourth place at 13 points was Mitt Romney. So, you know, and Romney's actually in pretty good shape for being where he is. The weirdness of the contest this year is that Republicans don't make it. You traditionally have to pick somebody and stay with somebody. Mike, check! No. The water is rising, Carl! President Obama is that he has governed too far from the left. As someone who supported him heavily in the primary and uh, for presidency, uh, I have been utterly disappointed with the centrist uh, to center-right policies that he's implemented, including policies that were straight out of John McCain's campaign. And frankly, it's been an embarrassment to see a quote-unquote liberal president. Can I ask you, what, 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 what was out of John McCain's playbook? Uh, let's see, uh, he tried for John McCain's approach to cap and trade uh, with Lindsey Graham in the Senate, and it failed uh, because it didn't work. Uh, he, if you, <laughs> I mean, I can. It, it, it didn't fail because he had, he had a uh, 60 40 margin in the Senate, but he had a significant, but, but, number, it, a significant number of. If of, you actually. Of, but, of manufacturing state Democrats. Yeah, but if you actually look at who the Democrats were, to clear the 60 margin, uh, ben Nelson is essentially a Republican. So in order to get to 60, you had to have a Republican vote. Yeah, Ben Nelson is, yeah. But regardless, I, I want to quibble with your math uh, on the uh, improving the economy. Uh, specifically the fact that in every major country where we've attempted an austerity, uh, in England, uh, in Greece, and across the world, it has led to a further dip in their economic growth, which makes sense because you decrease government spending, it decreases growth, because that takes money out of the economy. So since we're able to borrow at extremely low interest rates, it strikes me as illogical to cut spending now when we are best equipped to borrow. Well, first of all, uh, not every major country has adopted austerity measures and seen economic growth decline. The best example is Germany, which said, we're not going to follow the president, President Obama's suggestion of a stimulus program, and instead we're going to engage in in restraint, and is the economic power in Europe today as a result. The second thing I'd say is this, is that, look, you can believe in the Keynesian multiplier all your life, but the fact of the matter is, is that, that debt matters at some level, and when the debt, public debt of the United States has reached the levels that it has and has grown as rapidly as that, it represents a threat to the future prosperity. Debts must be repaid, either by taxing people more and taking more out of the private economy to pay the bondholders or by depreciating the currency. The problem with Greece is Greece didn't control the problem before it got too bad. We have the time and the ability to control the problem before it gets too bad here. But if we've gone from 40% of GDP, public debt equal 40% of GDP on January 20th to today, November 15th, when it is equal to 70% of GDP and will be roughly 72% by the end of the year, that is too rapid a, 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 an increase for any industrialized country in the world. Yeah. Oh, hi. Sorry. Uh, you 